Adam. We mentioned earlier that men's golf is in the ACC competition, as is women's golf. What all is going on? Jones, it's time for us to spend less than a minute talking about the baseball team, mm. which we do every week. I yes. Uh, baseball, big weekend last weekend. They swept Notre Dame, which Notre Dame is not having a great year, but Carolina outscored them 30-5. to five. Mm. Uh, That's a beatdown for any other ACC team. Like the, I think the five is more impressive to me than the 30. To do that to another ACC team says something about the quality of your club. Uh, and as part of doing that, Tar Heels set an all-time program record by winning 27 games in a row at Boshomer Stadium. That streak then ended on yeah. Tuesday night against another really good team, number 19 in the country, mm. Coastal Carolina. Tar Heels had the bases loaded in the ninth down one, but couldn't get in, couldn't, couldn't get that two-out hit they needed. Yeah, the Tar Heels struggled with runners on base in that game. I mean, the, the ninth inning is the one that's going to stand out, but they had some other opportunities throughout the rest of that game. Just couldn't convert them. Several solo homers, including two from Vance Honeycutt, who now has 51 career homers. He's only the second player in Carolina history to have 50-plus in his career. Davey Bell is the other. I don't, Vance Honeycutt is such a unique case study, I feel like, in baseball. Like, he, he strikes out a lot, but he also just do, does some things that are incredible. I mean, the home run number that you mentioned, his ability to run on the base pass, his defense is, I mean, elite in center field. It, he's just an, he's a really interesting player and I would assume a very interesting prospect how he is how he is judged at the next level or how where he is going to be picked because the the ceiling is is so high at this point in the season when he comes to the plate I think he's going to hit a home run every time he uh, he's really good but it's it uh, there's I just feel like there's a little boom or bust there, but it's a lot of boom. And even having said that, like sometimes you think of, I'll use that term again, boom or bust. Like his defense, Adam, I, he, I think he's the best defensive outfielder I've ever seen Carolina have. In fact, I'm sure he is. And he's one of the best defensive outfielders I can remember seeing in college. He's incredible. Yeah, and I think – the fact that he doesn't seem to carry any of the offense into the field with him to play defense, I think makes him such a good teammate, as you can tell that he is, uh, by the, how much his teammates like him. Uh, Why has Carolina been so good defensively in the outfield here recently? And they've had some struggles in the infield this year defensively, but their outfield defense has been, and I mean, obviously it's the players. I mean, Honeycutt and Cook and uh, D'Onofrio have all been good this year. D'Onofrio had a really good catch in the game against Coastal, but They've had some really good defensive plays in the outfield here the last couple of years. Well, Honeycutt and D'Onofrio, you've got really good speed. Yeah. And so, obviously, that helps you when you're playing defense in the outfield. But I do think you're right. You need to shore up that infield defense just a little bit because when you get into some of these one-run games, that can be problematic. Well, the weaknesses, in my opinion, of the Tar Heels right now are that. And then they've just had some really difficult – injuries at the starting pitching we know that uh, Knapp the Jake Knapp the presumed Friday night starter was hurt right before the season started and now Folger Boaz did not pitch last week and he left the South Carolina game with an apparent injury I don't we don't have any official word on that but um, didn't pitch against Notre Dame and I don't I mean that's two guys that were weekend starter that that's hard to replace sometimes you go into a year and you don't you you only have two weekend starters that you feel good about. I think Carolina, what we have already seen is that this is a very talented, albeit young, pitching staff. Um, so they've been able to uh, manage some of those losses to this point. But that is not easy. Two weekend starters is a big deal. Yeah. And, and again, that's having said that about Boa, that is just the fact he did not pitch last weekend. But even if he's out for just any period of time, you're trying to figure out that is not easy. Tarles do have some really good young depth, and they've got some young arms who have not pitched at all yet, who I think the idea is to redshirt them, but if you end up having to do something longer term, do you change your mind about that? Adam, and you live this life more than I do. 
much more than I do. When did everybody start throwing like 95? Like, when did this happen? Around the same time that everyone's arm started to get hurt. Yeah. Those two things are closely related. It is the value on velocity, and again, you live this life much more than me, seems to be at an all-time high. There's there's guys who can – I mean, the the consistency of hitting – High velocity at the college level is much higher than it used to be. But to Adam's point, also a lot more guys are getting hurt because I think what is already an unnatural motion in throwing the baseball, when you stress it to the point that you're trying to get like, oh, you throw you throw 89 and this guy throws 93, well, I'm going, sorry, going 93. I mean, the, the premium placed on the ability to throw it hard – is wild and the ability to train yourself year-round to do that and you have so much more information than you did even 15 years ago even like five years ago i feel like yeah it has just totally changed the way that you sort of create pitchers but it's also created a situation where they are training year-round and in a lot of cases that's just too much time to throw that much it's almost like it's understood you're going to hurt your elbow Yes. It's just like, when's it going to happen, and then we'll right. fix it, and then you'll be okay. Right. But it's it's almost, I mean, again, right? I mean, it's almost like this is inevitable that this is going to happen. That's crazy to me. It used to be that if you had one guy on the pitching staff who had Tommy John, you were like, oh, that's a serious injury. Now you've got You're like, probably, oh, wait, yeah, when would you have your Tommy John? Yeah, have you had yours yet, or are we going to do that here sometime in the future? You've got six or seven, and it's it's as common as spraining an ankle. It's just that it takes a year to come back from it. Hmm. Sorry, we veered off the path there. A relevant topic. Um, big series this weekend for the Tar Heels. It actually started last night against NC State. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's in Raleigh. We know that series is nuts. Uh, Carolina currently has a three-game lead in the Coastal over Virginia, Duke, and Virginia Tech. Tar Heels still have to play Duke and Virginia Tech. State is all over the place, as they often are. They're really tough to beat at home in the ACC, which is where they'll be this weekend. I think they're 8-1. and one. They're mm. not good on the road, but the one good weekend they had on the road was at number two Clemson, where they won the series, and Clemson had been the best team in the league. They've been bad in the midweek. They lost to Campbell this week. So there's all that to say, no idea what's going to show up for State, but you know they'll have really good crowds. DJ Burns is going to throw out a first pitch at some point. I guarantee it. The Tar Heels are going to have to play really well. You're going to face some adversity at some point. This isn't... I don't think this isn't a sweep type series. There seems to be a lot of having said that, there are a lot of sweeps, I feel like, in Carolina State baseball. Don't you yeah. think? I don't know why, but I do feel like there are. Carolina swept state last year. I think state swept Carolina two years ago or maybe three years ago. Yeah. We'll see. That's a contentious series. It's always hot. There's always a lot of emotions that come into play. And we'll see how it all plays. Carolina's going to put a lot of young players on the field in that series who are going to experience an environment they haven't seen very much like. Uh, Adam, you mentioned the Virginia Tech series. Did I hear that you will be on the call for that series, Adam? Uh, I will be in the booth for that series. Yeah! Do it! When is that? That's two weeks from now. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Yeah. How can people watch, Adam? On ACC Network Extra. Yeah. Darren Vaught? Yeah. On play-by-play, I think think <laughs> adam's just gonna show up and be like who am i talking to today guys yeah honestly i don't know who's gonna be up there it, it could be darren yeah hope so he does a good job yeah i mean i don't not hope it's anybody except me yeah that's adam right said, i'm not working with jones yeah is jones otherwise engaged if so i'm in yeah so that's gonna be a big series though the Hokies have played well their schedule not great so they might be coming back to earth a little but big acc series other big ACC happenings this weekend. We, we got ACC championships all over this place, including women's tennis. Uh, Tar Heels won a couple matches last weekend, beat Louisville, beat Notre Dame, then won the tiebreaker with Virginia for the top seed at the ACC championships, which are in Cary this weekend. Here's the problem with the top seed. That's actually the much better half of the bracket. Mm. Um, Carolina opens play today against the winner of Duke and Wake Forest. A win potentially sets up the semifinals against NC State. 
Who's beaten Carolina twice this year, right? And and I think is probably the second best team in the conference, but somehow finished fourth. And they've both been really close. Yes. Both the matches between Carolina and State. They've been very close. So And remember, they met each other for the national championship last year. Right. So no guarantee we get to that because State will have to win one and Carolina would have to beat the winner of Duke Wake. Uh, but ACC championships all weekend in Cary. Remember, State beat Carolina to win the ACC last year, but then the Tar Heels got their revenge. Uh, we'll also have men's tennis. Uh, they actually began Wednesday in Cary. Car- uh, Carolina is the number five seed. And so yes, yesterday, as you're hearing this, they faced the winner of Miami Boston College. If the Tar Heels won that, which as we're talking, we don't know, they play Duke today on Friday. Again, men's tennis, ACC's, and carry this weekend. Uh, Non-ACC championships action. Women's lacrosse uh, won 16-9 at Pitt last weekend. Darcy Felter, what about a day? Five goals and seven assists. Both career highs, I bet I so. I would think so. Seven assists. Tariels outshot Pitt 40-19. to It was a thorough win. Again, after we're talking, uh, Carolina is going to host Duke. They hosted them yesterday. And then ACCs begin in multiple sites starting on April 21st. The first round is at campus sites. Keep then my head around all this, Adam. Yeah, it gets confusing. So Carolina won't have to play in the first round at campus sites. Then the actual ACC championships are in Charlotte. Hmm. At least I don't think the Tar will have to play at campus sites. We'll see. Who knows? It's all up to what happened yesterday. Uh, softball went up to Pitt, won two out of three. Uh, they split a doubleheader on Saturday and then won the clincher eight to one behind Kenner Ray Dark. The Tar Heels won two games in this series. Kenner Ray Dark got the win in both those wins through two complete games mm. in both those wins. Uh, she gave up three runs in 14 innings pitched. Tar Heels at home this weekend against Louisville, Friday through Sunday, a game each day. Some good rowing news. Oh. Rowing goes up and takes on our good friend, the Hippos. Scratch that revolutionaries mm. at the George Washington Invitational. Roe versus the Revs. <laughs> the most famous Roe versus yeah. anything out there. That's right. <laughs> uh, Carolina got wins from the first Varsity 8, the second Varsity 8, and the third Varsity 8. And the first Varsity 8 is the ACC Crew of the Week. Congrats. Might be time for a little rowing guest on the podcast. One of the sports that we have not had an athlete from. I was actually I was thinking about that for next week, maybe. Uh, and they'll be back closer to home next week at the Lake Wheeler Invitational in Raleigh. Hmm. Uh, men's lacrosse lost ten to nine to Syracuse last weekend. Led three to nothing, but Syracuse went on a seven zero run. Hmm. Then the Tariels went on a run at the end, but couldn't get that last tying goal. Uh, third straight year, Carolina Syracuse has been a one goal game. Tar Heels are 6-6 six and six overall, 0-2 oh in the league, and it doesn't get easier because tomorrow at 11.30, they go to number one in the country, Notre Dame. Mm. That'll be on the ACC Network, so you can watch that there. Uh, so that is it. Yeah. Your challenge is to keep up with all these ACC championships this weekend and know what's happening for next week when we come back with hopefully some good news.